Gabby, congratulations on the film. Uh, really evokes the the spirit of London during World War II. And of course, your screenplay is based on Lisa Evans' book, Their Finest Hour, and indeed a half as well. Um, I wondered how you got involved in the project in the first place and what appealed to you about the book and why you thought it would make a good screenplay. I was given the book to read by uh, Lisa's agent, who's a friend of mine, uh, and read it and thought it would... I really loved it in so many ways. Um, I loved I loved the immersion in the period and how incredibly detailed that is, and details that you haven't come across before. So it felt f- it felt f- fresh, which I think is qu- quite difficult with the war, which is so written Such about. Such a well known subject, yes, and isn't so it? Fic- so often fictionalised. But the thing I really love about Lissa's writing is her humour. It's it, she's incredibly acute and so much happens between the lines so you're left to work things out for yourself and it's very very sly and very witty and very funny but it's not it's never sneering which Mm. so I read it and thought gosh this might really good television and it would make really good film and then thought no it would make a really good film it would make much better film is what it should be which is a bit odd because I hadn't written film before and I was even at that point thinking and I want (laughs) you know and I'd really like to do it and it, it kind of went from there. Um, so did you make any changes to what you were given? Yes, there are quite a lot of... St- it's interesting because a lot of... You need to re-engineer the story. It, a novel, for a start, is an interior form. You know, you're given access to people's thoughts. If, for a screenplay or a dialogue-based visual work, all that has to be turned outward. So there's quite a lot you have to... There's quite a lot you have to change for that reason. And also, it's a big and rich novel. It's um, It would be, you know, hundreds of hours of screen time if you just stood it on its feet. Um, so there was there was quite a lot of um, re-engineering that was done. The th- th- things that you have to decide to leave out, what you have to, what you keep. But what I th- hope is true is that it was always, even when changes were made and quite big changes, it still always felt true to the spirit of the book to me and I hope to Lissa. So you you referred earlier to the fact that you've you've written for TV and actually I think this is probably your first film. Yes. So what's the difference between writing for the small screen and the big one? Do you know, when I started, I thought, oh, it's really interesting, am I going to get notes which which say, no, you're writing like a TV writer, not a film writer? And I didn't. That's partly because people were being kind to me, I think. But not as much as I thought, but you've got more... I think in film you have more space a little bit more um room for the visuals i think the visual uh, obviously television is a visual medium but it feels to me like you can leave more room for the director in film um and you have to in fact that they need to inhabit it in a way that isn't always the case in television sorry that's very vague (sighs) Yes, I think it was to do with the space and the way that the rhythm of the the way the story moves in film is different. Okay, and this this is a film about writers as well as about making films, and you actually see their writing process with that huge board and all the all the notes pinned onto it. I wondered what your writing process was. Well, of course, that for me was a complete fantasy because most of the time <laughs> I was writing, I was on my own, either in a bedroom in my house in Leeds or later in an office in Leeds, in my little office. Um, so it's completely, <laughs> completely solitary. So the idea of being in a writer's room with a lot of witty banter and some sexual tension was <laughs> very appealing. Very appealing. Very appealing and not always <laughs> happening at all. But um, vis- um, visually, visualising a story and the points that you're trying to get to and where things fall, yes, I do, I stick it, I stick it up on the wall yeah. like, like they do. They have, a, they have a board. I use blue tack. But it's this it high tech stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and am I right in that you actually appear in the film as well? I, I do. If I couldn't in <laughs> one of the the ministry films, the one that Catherine calls oh, yeah. Carrots. Now, how did that come about? Oh, I was uh, really wanted to be. I really wanted to do something in the in the film, and I was trying to think of what I might, what I could ask to do that I would um, that they nobody would kind of panic about. And actually, I'd, I can't even remember. I suddenly thought I could do that. I could be in the. F- I could do carrots. I've watched so many films of the period that I can channel the uh, that acting style, or I felt I could. And um, so I asked, and they very kindly said yes. And then 
it, I couldn't believe I survived to the final cut. So it, there you were actually speaking the words that you'd written. Yes. I was incredibly nervous and I can't. It, I've proved to myself that I can't walk and talk at the same time on camera. It's really <laughs> difficult. One, one last question. Everybody I know who's seen the film says how wonderful Bill Nye is in it. And, of course, his character loves to have a lot of input into the script. Um, how like his character is he really? Oh, no, it was all written, but no, not 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 at all like that. Not to, it, absolutely not trying to wrest control, because that's what his character does is, um, yes, it's try and make it a starring vehicle for him, but he's not like that at all. Gabby, thank you very much thank indeed. You.